Hi guys, today we're working on the container watermelon plants. I planted these just a few weeks ago in pots and I'll put a link up on the screen if you would like to see that video. These are doing so well right now. I'm very happy with them. They've grown quite a bit since I've planted them. If you remember, I staked my trellis with two stakes. They were sturdy at first, but after a few days, they kind of loosened up and they weren't as sturdy as I would like them to be. So I decided to put in a third stake. This is just a plain wooden stake. And now the trellis is much sturdier. For those of you that didn't watch the last video, this is just an upside down tomato cage. I bent the top pieces down so that nobody loses an eye. I've been gradually adding mulch to the containers. There's all kinds of stuff in here, old pea vines, grass, clover. It's really important to mulch your containers. If it's hot outside where you live in the summertime, it's going to keep water from evaporating from your pot and keep moisture levels a little bit more consistent. Just be sure that you're not using grass clippings from your yard if you're a person that sprays herbicide and things like that on your lawn. These plants are really starting to vine out nicely, so it's time to start training them up my trellis. Watermelon vines will grab on a little bit with their tendrils onto your trellis, but really you still need to tie them up. They don't grab onto things as well as, say, cucumbers do. Not that cucumbers are great at it, but watermelons are worse at climbing than cucumbers. Just to give you something to compare them to, I know most gardeners have grown cucumbers. I'm using this stretchy plastic tie tape. It's really cheap. You can buy it at the dollar store and it's only a dollar. You don't need scissors. You can just rip off the piece that you want to use. Try to be as gentle as possible when you're tying your vines up the trellis so that you don't accidentally break one off. You could also use flagging tape or any kind of stretchy fabric. Just choose something that is not going to cut into your vine. Now we could just take this vine straight up the trellis like this if we wanted to. I'm going to get another piece of tie tape on here. And as this grows, I'm going to train it and tie it to go this way around the hoop. And I'll just continue tying it up as it grows. Some vines, I might just tie them straight up, and other vines, I might just let them ramble out of the pot and onto the ground. It just depends on how big this plant's going to get. I know the leaves look weird and upside down now, but they're going to adjust themselves and reach up and face the sun the way that they're supposed to within a couple of days. Here's one that's already doing some of the work for me, but I'm still going to tie it up so that it has the support that it needs. When these plants start producing fruit, I'll show you guys how to support your fruit on your trellis as well. Now I'm going to fertilize these with some water-soluble liquid fertilizer. The nutrients in water-soluble fertilizers are immediately available to your plant. You might remember that when I first planted these, I gave them some granular slow-release fertilizer as well. This is their first liquid feed. This fertilizer contains all three N, P, and K, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. I'm stirring this up really well. I'm going to fertilize them with this liquid feed probably about once every two weeks. I get asked pretty often about how often you should water your plants. Recently, I have been watering these potted watermelon plants just about every day. It's been really hot here. We have had temperatures in the mid 80s and even into the 90s on some days. The hotter it is outside, the more often you're going to need to water your plants, unless you're getting a lot of rain, of course. If your temperatures are in the 70s, you can probably go a couple of days or more between waterings, but it all really just depends on your temperatures, the amount of rainfall you're getting, how well the soil you're using is draining, and the size of your pots. So it's really going to vary from gardener to gardener. It's something you just have to learn for yourself and get the hang of. The watermelon plants that I have growing in the ground are definitely watered less often than these watermelons that are growing in pots because I have clay soil and it does a really good job of holding on to water. And that's all for this video. I'll put a playlist up on the screen of this series that I'm doing on growing watermelons in pots. And I'll also put another playlist up on the screen of just a whole bunch of watermelon videos. I have a lot of them. I also make all kinds of other gardening videos. If that sounds like something that interests you, be sure to subscribe to my channel. 
Thank you guys for watching and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.